Hello, I'm here, I'm here to talk about how to introduce KUNIT to physical device drivers. I'm Thales Aparecido. I have a bachelor in computer science from Unicamp, Brazil. And as you may know, I'm here to, to, to talk about a uh, result of multiple uh, Google Summer of Code projects under the XORG Foundation umbrella, developed by me, together with Maíra Canal, Magali Lemes, Isabella Basso, and mentored by Rodrigo Siqueira from MD, and Melissa Wen and Andrea Almeida from Igalia. The goal of our projects was to basically learn how to write unit tests for physical device drivers using the MD display driver as a subject. The MD has a huge code base uh, supporting multiple generations of their GPU, GPUs, and it's under the variant subsystem. Our initial expectations was to have a lot of problem mocking uh, GPUs, but also worrying how to write unit tests in a way that the community could uh, contribute more and uh, keeping ourselves aligned to the MD guide guidelines. So we started the, the summer converting the, the RM case of testing K unit tests, uh, which actually started as a hackathon in Brazil. And those tests that, that were converted are part, part are currently part of the DRM official suite of tests, which are also uh, integrated in the IGT GPU tools. And our development first started to learn how to use KUnish as completely uh, beginners in the kernel. We, we picked some functions that were clearly independent from the GPU. And then uh, we, we picked some tests some more tests, and uh, this time picking tests that were clearly dependent of some specific generation of MD GPUs. But, but in the end, in both cases, uh, of course, in, in this case, it's, it's, we still didn't have any problem mocking GPUs. And finally, trying to force ourselves with, to find some code that actually depended on GPUs, we started to look in the mailing list to find regressions so we could write some KUnit tests for them. And again, but again, we didn't need to mock any uh, GPU interacting code. So to kind of look at the, the footprint, footprint we left behind, we managed to run GCOV, uh, which is currently a great potential project for uh, future GSOCs, because it's currently only supported by GCC6. But it just confirmed our uh, findings so, uh, this far. That is a lot of code in the in the uh, in the MD, MD display driver is actually completely GPU agnostic. So there's a lot of low hanging fruit for our beginners in the kernel development. Uh, beginners who are interested to contribute to the kernel to write unit tests with KUnit without any knowledge about GPUs. And the thing that I came here to discuss was that actually there's a lot of functions that are static that might require tests. And it's really tricky to, to reach every code path later without uh, actually testing the static functions. And KUnish has support for writing tests for static functions, but if you don't agree, we should test static functions. We could, of course, expose them as global. And as they, sa they said, you can either write a separate testing module with KUnit or write the test inside the, the driver module. So just to brush around the code, we could write KUnit tests for the driver, injecting the KUnit test inside the driver code by just including it in the, the, the footer of your test code. It, the, 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 this last approach is documented in the, the current documentation. Uh, otherwise, if you don't agree to write uh, unit tests for static functions, you can, of course, expose them in the header file, include them in the, your test. For the, the other approach, you can write a test suite model. Uh, but of course, to write a test module, you would need to explore your symbols. So in the case of MD, uh, code base, 
most of the functions are not exported. So you will need either to export them conditionally, but like uh, David said, some people are thinking about uh, enabling KUnit in production. So I guess this can, can, can uh, impose some memory problems. And which we learned, we can actually export the test case itself. So if you don't want to export or like add uh, noise to your, to your functions, you can export the test case uh, inside your, your module and write a test suite switch with your including the, the, the test cases. And finally, if you have nothing against uh, writing tests for static functions, you can combine the two, the two approaches. You can inject your test cases, export it, uh, ex exporting the, uh, the test case inside your, your driver code and include them in a separate test suite. So just before we start discussing, I would like to thank the XR Foundation for set for accepting our proposals for the Google Summer of Code. Thank my mentors from MD and Igalia. Special thanks for MD for donating the GPUs that we thought we would need to test the, to run the test cases, but in the end, um, I guess they were needed to, to at least run the, the, their own code. And a special thanks for the Linux Foundation, not only for, for this event, but also for sponsoring my trip here, without which I wouldn't be attending in person. Thanks also to Ra for the, the ticket for the event. And you can also see, watch my, my teammates, my canal, my Magali Lemes and Isabella Basso. They will be presenting at XDC later in October. So now for the discussion, what do you guys uh, and girls <laughs> think about writing unit pets for static functions? Anyone has, or just to, to, to bind them? Do you have any, any thoughts about writing tests for uh, as test modules or to write tests inside the driver itself? Maybe depending on your pipeline, you have some thoughts on that. And maybe for the RM people present here, uh, would you have a, a, other topics to, to, to talk about? Like we converted the, the, the RM test from case of test, which were integrated in the IGT to KUnit. So would you like to keep them running inside IGT or would you like to run them as KUnit in your pipeline? So, yeah. So it depends on two things. Um, okay. I think it's... I don't know. The other one. I, don't, I don't think one of them. This one. Oh. This one works. Um, one or two things. So static functions, I think it's a good idea to write them, uh, not a problem. Um, the conversion that happened going from k to, to to KUnit would be, it's good to have that probably, but it depends on if users can run it. Meaning, is there a, does that continue to work as a regression test? So that's, I would make sure that it does, um, continues to do that. Of course. And, um, uh, kind of keep going back and forth. Driver tests inside, but you sometimes do need tests inside the, I have done it in the past. You would, as I write the driver, I would have a test code in the driver that could be invoked from either user, user any, not just a driver, any module, kernel module, you could have that. It's it, reliably, you have to be, have a way to test that. Um, uh, meaning be able to, however you do it, either you do this, uh, a couple of things to think about it is, do you include the test code in the production code or would that be something governed by another um, configurable? We do have that in the kernel. We do have a lot of test, op, test and debug options yeah. that we compile in. Um, and then also sometimes we load test modules to test. So I am, um, in general, going back to the uh, what Ted said too. <laughs> I am going to question the. Um, I wouldn't personally include any test code in production system on production systems. Yeah. That's that would make me very nervous because for one thing, you're not testing the test code 
um, as much as the actual code. So um, I would kind of question the sanity, but um, that's my, looks like you, you have something to say. Um, on unit tests for static functions, I think everyone agrees it would be really nice to be able to test static functions. Um, uh, as you go through all, all of the different ways of testing them, it's a bit awkward. Um, one thing we have thought about is conditionally exporting, as you say, um, uh, individual symbols. So, you know, having a define um, uh, k-unit exportable or something, um, or exported for testing, which is static when k-unit is disabled and not when it isn't. Um, and one possibility there is there's uh, symbol namespacing. So if we can export uh, symbols in a separate symbol namespace uh, just for testing, uh, that hopefully will perhaps not eliminate the problem, which I think most people are most scared about with uh, um, exporting internal functions, which is namespace pollution. Um, that's a way of uh, ameliorating that a bit. Um, so that's that's one thought we had, but but certainly personally, I sit firmly on the side of, you know, maybe not every static function needs its own test, but the vast majority of them probably could benefit from it. Yeah. Um, and you know, as mentioned, tests inside a driver's module itself versus having a standalone test module. Uh, I I come down on the having it in a standalone test module is best if we can do it and. Um, the problems, the, the reasons to have the test inside the driver module are all basically, it's awkward to put it in a separate module. We don't have the ideal technical solution for that, not philosophically, this is where it should be. If, if I'm not mistaken, the ERM actually has a macro for exporting mm. for tests. Yeah, I think, I think that's the right way to go about it. Mm. Um, and maybe symbol namespacing is a future path to, to walk down to make that more palatable to more people. Yeah. And just to mention the, the manual of the regression tests that we wrote were, were actually for a static function. So there is clearly need for some testing there. Yeah, definitely namespacing. And what happens if that you have to be careful about ABI for sure. And standalone, like modules, isolating, remember, I was touching on isolating the test code. If it's a module, it is easier to isolate and load and unload. You can just take that out as opposed to making it part of the driver module. Yeah. So it, it, as long as you can do that um, easily, dynamic runtime, that's, that's what module will give you the ability to load, run your test, unload. Yeah. So that is really uh, good to isolate that way. Yeah. Yeah, I think the to-do item probably for, for KUnit on this is part of the, the argument between standalone test modules versus having tests inside driver modules is that the only way we have to trigger running a test in KUnit is loading that module because tests run on load. And if we had another way of triggering a test that was not so tied to module load, much of the argument about which of this is better would disappear. Yeah, one of the, the things that, I, that my team didn't know, okay, one of, one of the things that my team didn't know uh, was how were people using KUnit? So which pipelines were using KUnit and how were they uh, running, either by the KUnit 2 or by, I don't know, some other starting point. And that would help to, to make it clear how, how, how to, to write the code. So depending on the, on the pipeline, if the, the driver module has something special that it has to be loaded and then the test should run, like, I don't know, I, I, I'm not sure if the platform test would have something like that. Yeah, um, I'm obviously also very interested in how people are running KUnit. Um, <laughs> uh, I think our goal certainly is it's best if tests work no matter how they're run. So 
if it's possible to implement things in a way that is not dependent on running it using KUnit tool or using some other, uh, you know, using modules versus built in, you know, the, the best tests are ones uh, that run in any environment. Yeah. Any other questions or commenters? Thank you. Just a simple question. So uh, all your KUnit tests you did for uh, the AMD DM, DRM area, did you, how many bugs did you find? Many bugs. Or on cover? We, we didn't actually find bugs in the test we initially, were, that we like uh, chose to write, but we tried to write test for regressions currently being worked on the, the main list. And actually, the, one of the regressions that we will work, uh, the initial value, because the, the, the story of the, this regression was, initially the code was not compiling for 32-bit uh, architectures, then there was a commit to, to fix this, which added the regression. The, the function started uh, resulting in zero. So there were some fixes in the, the main list, which made the value stop being zero, but actually started with completely diff different values from, from the start. So I don't know if that is a bug, because I'm not sure uh, that the, this proposal was not um, upstream yet. So I'm not sure how the function would be in the end. But I just want to know if you had any payoff. You did all this work, like 10% of the DRM code you showed up there. Was there any payoff? That's all I was trying to like, get to. It like, that's usually the excitement. You write all this KUnit stuff, you're like, okay, did I find something, prevent something, do something like, you know, I was just curious if there's a payoff. Yeah, that, that was the clause that we got from, from finding something. Like, the uh, one proposal in the main list was resulting in a value that is probably not correct. But uh, I guess that, that kind of that is kind of a bug we found. We'll take a small win. Yeah, so far. Well, I think that if you took self-tests that were present before and you moved them into KUnit ones, they would keep passing. It's not like you try to add additional tests, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the, this conversion of from K self test to KUnit was actually a part of a hackathon to just exactly to uh, teach some, some people from the university to how to write KUnit tests. So I guess it, just was easier to, to look at some tests that were already done before writing the tests. Uh, just to, to add to that a little bit, um, one thing that we did notice is KUnit's tooling on uh, has made it a bit easier to pick up some interesting things like code which only works on some architectures. So there was a DRM test uh, for some function, um, for some format conversion, and the test originally only worked on little Indian architectures. Having KUnit's tooling around meant could easily just run it with arch equals power PC uh, and notice, oh, this test fails now. It must be Indian that's dependent, uh, which it was. So. Okay. So I, I would just like to to say that beginners. Can use this very easy to learn and the, the, don't be afraid from device drivers because there's a lot of low hanging fruit there. Thanks. Thank you.